Judge's Corner is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com and GatheringMagic.com. Support our show by visiting both websites. Now it's time for Judge's Corner with David Green. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Judge's Corner. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that I feel a lot of players and even judges don't fully grasp the ramifications of. Bribery and wagering. First, let's take a look at exactly what bribery is. Bribery is when you offer another player an incentive to influence the outcome of the match. Some examples include, Hey, I'll give you $5 for the win. I'll give you the win for a booster pack. If you can seat this game, I'll pay for your movie ticket tonight. If you give me a foot rub later, I'll let you have the win. Essentially, if the outcome of the match is dependent upon some sort of offer, then it's bribery. It doesn't matter how insignificant the offer is, or if you meant it or not. Once you say it, it's out there. Next, let's take a look at wagering. Wagering basically is betting on some portion of the event. Some examples include, I'll bet you five bucks their game will go to time. I'll bet you a hundred that Mark will win the event. I'll wager a can of soda that you're wrong about this rules question. Some things that are not wagering would be like, I'll bet I'll beat you in 10 turns. I bet FNM will be over tonight by midnight. I bet you're wrong about this rules question. Do you see the difference? If you're just saying, hey, I just bet X, Y, and Z, without actually offering to wager something tangible, then it's not really a bet. Another really important thing to do is that if you're offered a bribe or a wager, you have to stop what you're doing immediately and contact a judge. Failure to do so will unfortunately lump you into just as much trouble as the offending player, and you'll both end up receiving a disqualification. That's right. Regardless of the rules enforcement level of the event, if you offer a wager or a bribe, or are offered one and don't immediately tell someone, then you are both going to be disqualified from the event if the head judge finds out. It doesn't matter if it was FNM or the Pro Tour, or for $100 or even a penny. Of course, if you overhear a bribe but aren't part of the offer, you're not going to be disqualified. However, just because you didn't do anything wrong and thus won't get penalized, that doesn't mean that you're doing everything right by not bringing it to the judge's attention. So you might be wondering why is bribery and wagering such a bad thing? Or why is it punished so harshly at all levels of play? Well, let's go ahead and answer those questions. Bribery is bad for you as a player because it's not fair that someone else can play in the same event as you, but offer to buy a win when things don't go their way. You fought hard for your wins. It's not a fair playing field when someone can just spend additional resources from outside the game to secure their wins. And it's not fair to everyone else if you let them get away with it. By not telling a judge, you're giving them a free pass to do it again to someone else, and possibly showing other players that there's no harm in doing it, risking their future events. Wagering is also bad for players, because it damages the image of the game. If people start associating magic with gambling, then structured tournaments like FNM or Grand Prix could be in jeopardy. There have been FNMs that were ended by local law enforcement because they thought magic was akin to poker. There was even a Grand Prix in Vienna, Austria, that did not allow minors to participate due to their local laws. This is why Wizards of the Coast takes a zero-tolerance policy with bribery and wagering, regardless of the competitiveness of the event. This is why you should not tolerate it at your events as a judge or a player. This is one of those things where it doesn't matter if the player did or didn't know it was against the rules, we always disqualify for it. So the next thing you might be wondering is, if I intentionally draw with my opponent, does that mean I'm colluding with them? Or what are some things that look like bribery and wagering but aren't? Those are some great questions. Let's go ahead and address them next. You can offer to split in top eight, top four, or even the finals of an event. But if someone says no, you have to play it out. You can offer to split your prizes with a friend, as long as it's not in exchange for the match results. You can concede to your opponent, as long as it's not for something in return. And you can intentionally draw with your opponent, resulting in one point each, instead of three for the winner and zero for the loser. As you can see, none of this can be in exchange for something. There cannot be a condition attached to the decision. So what if you want to split, but you can't split all the prizes evenly? Say you're in the top eight of a PTQ, and you want to split all the prizes among the other top eight players, and then play for the invite in the airfare to the Pro Tour. That's perfectly fine. You could also do the same thing in the finals of that same PTQ if all of you didn't agree to previously split. But you could also change things up in the finals, since it tends to become a little bit more relaxed since your matches don't affect anybody else in the tournament. For example, in the finals of a PTQ, you can chop prizes so things aren't entirely fair. What I mean by that is 50-50. So long as the invite and the airfare, which can't be split, remain with the first place prize package. 
So for example, you could chop the prizes so that first got 30% and second got 70%, or so that first got 0% and second got 100%, whatever you two agreed upon, so long as the first place prize still got the invite and the airfare. But because you guys didn't split things evenly, and it couldn't be split evenly, that would mean that one of you players would have to drop from the event, and that no match could actually be played, leaving the first place prize to the remaining player, and the second place prize to the player who dropped. So that concludes our episode. If you have any questions about this episode or any others or any other rules questions in general, you can send us an email at judgescorner at gatheringmagic.com. And if you like this video or any of our other content, don't forget to subscribe to Gathering Magic. Until next time, remember, always split your aces, don't forget to put your money on black, and bribery costs two blue and three colorless.